All right, guys, today's tutorial on what to do, we are going to talk about these hydro gears. Uh, these are typically found on most of your zero turn mowers and a, a variety of other machines too. And we're just going to explain what the parts are, what they do on these hydro gears. If you know what to look for and you know how these operate, you can typically, uh, I would say 65% of the time, I'm able to rip one of these apart and rebuild it really, really inexpensive and get the machine back to work. So let's go over the hydro gear, how it works, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to take one apart and what to look for. So looking at your pump, you will see on top this little black case right here, which is actually called your charge pump, okay? A lot of times this is what goes bad on these motors, um, and it's just held on there by the two bolts right there. So it's really easy to get off of there and inspect and what it looks like when it's off is just like that, okay? And you can see the bottom of it. But underneath of it, you're going to find a rotor, an inner and an outer, like this, okay? Basically, what happens is your oil is coming from your tank into your motor here, okay? And then it's sending that oil into the head. The head would be this part here underneath of the charge pump. It's sending the oil into the head, and then it goes up into this pump here, okay? And then the pump has those rotors inside that are rotating. And what it does is it will drop that fluid down into a galley in here, okay? And it's going to feed pressure to the line that has, I'm sorry, it's going to feed oil to the line that has the lowest pressure. All right, and then it's also going to bleed down into the motor and bypass some parts just to lubricate and cool the motor. And it will come down into the bottom, and then uh, whatever's remaining after that goes back up to the tank. And here is where your cylinder is going to be with some pistons in it. And that's going to be resting on top of a little cradle, which we also call a swash plate. And basically what that does, that swash plate does, when you're engaging forward or reverse... There's a swash plate in there that's rotating and it's making those pistons go up and down, which is giving you the, the pressure that you need and sending the machine in that direction. So let's get into taking one apart. And I also want to show you where the uh, seals are going to be, the gaskets, if you have one that's leaking. And uh, I'm going to show you some of the things to look for. But most importantly, we're going to show you how to take it apart and um, fix it so that you can get back and running again without spending hundreds of dollars. But we're gonna jump into it and take it apart. Okay, so we're gonna start with removing our charge pump here. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna bother giving you guys the sizes to these here because uh, a lot of pumps have different bolts in them, different sizes. If you look at the one I took out, um, I mean, this is actually a 10 millimeter on this one. But if you look over here, these are half inches on this one. Okay, and then on this charge pump, you can see you got a half inch bolt up top, but on this pump, it actually had the hex head on there. Um, so every pump is different, so don't go by any sizes I give you. I'm not going to give you any at all, actually. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove this uh, charge pump right here. So our two bolts are loose. Now this, on, you know, sometimes might be a little tight. You can uh, just take you know, anything metal pretty much, or a little hammer, and you can just kind of tap sideways on it here and there. Don't, do not bang on it at all. Just little taps. Or most of the time with your hand, you can just wiggle and free it up. All right, now be very careful when you're pulling this up. There is going to be a little check valve under here. There's going to be a little spring. All right, so you definitely don't want to lose that because um, that will mess everything up waiting for delivery on a new spring. You can see it there, the spring. Um... So this is what the uh, charge pump looks like here. Now, if uh, you have any type of damage under here, then this definitely is going to have to be replaced. Okay. But for the most part, this is uh, pretty nice here, pretty smooth. Again, this is an operating pump that I'm working on. We shouldn't really come across any issues. But that looks pretty good. All right. So inspect your charge pump there. Now make sure you have a nice clean surface to set this down and set everything down in the order you took it off. So when you go to put it back together, you start from this end and work your way up. And that should where you your end point should be. All right, now coming over here to your spring, we want to take that out. And you're going to see a little ball in there. Be very careful because when you 
pull that out of there if you try to do it with a pick or something else and it goes bouncing on the floor good luck finding it that ball we can get out after we remove the head all right so here you can see this is your rotator here okay you got an inner and an outer gear now when your oil is coming into the head here into here okay this is what's happening all right and i showed you earlier on the other one that was seized up but essentially this is uh such tight quarters here the way this is uh, engineered i mean if you got dirty oil and you get one little bit of sand in there or something it's totally gonna lock this up and if this is locked up well guess what then your charge pump's not working this you should be able to spin just like that and you can see your high sides and your low sides which would be where it's building the pressure your high and your low pressure all right so to pull this up you can just de-separate you can pull it right off like that and this will slide right off of the shaft there to see how it sits on those teeth that'll slide right up as well okay so you want to bring these over and set these down as well um and if you want that to lock back in you basically are just going to turn this until it falls back down in there like that all right but everything is going in the order we took it out here all right now we are coming down to uh the head here all right and this is the galleys I was talking about where your charge pump is going to dispose of your oil into uh, the port here that has the lowest pressure, okay? And then it's also going to drain down into, uh, into here and it's going to lubricate and cool and then it's going to go back up to your tank. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this head off here. And while I'm loosening these, you will actually see this head start to pop up on its own. The reason it's doing that is because going back over here, um, you have these pistons under there, basically. And these pistons pretty much have the springs in them. If we could pull one of these out. There we go. I got it out. You can see the spring in here. Okay. So those are compressed. And when you loosen that head up, what it's doing is it's all that pressure is, is coming up. And that's, that's a good sign. If you see that head pop up, you know you got good working pistons. If it does not pop up, chances are it's probably seized like this. And again, we're going to show you some ways to, to pretty much unseize this as soon as we get to that part now. So let me finish uh, loosening this up, and I'll show you. You'll start to see it rise. All right, so I got all the bolts loosened. You can see how much this has risen now here. Now we're going to lift this off. Now at this point, if you're following the video, this is where that cylinder block is going to be underneath with the pistons, right? It sits in top of that head there, okay? The way this is designed, it's fitted in there. Now when you pull this up, those pistons may all, that cylinder block may all come out with it and you might see pistons and springs falling all over the place. Do not flip out. It's totally fine, okay? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But let me pull up on this. Mine may come out because I'm pulling it on an angle here. All right, it actually stayed in there. All right, here is the head now. Before we get onto that cylinder block, let's just look at this. Okay, there's the top of it. And here's the bottom. So this is something that you want to inspect. All right, and you want to make sure that everything here nice and smooth you don't see chunks of metal in here nothing like that there's no really serious digs all right now you might see little swirls in there um, which is common you're gonna you might see little tiny things that look like scoring that's not really serious unless you can seriously feel it with your finger if you had a leak on the pump where you were getting low pressure and the pump was leaking you have a seal here you get a pick and you can pull this seal right up and then you can replace your seal here here is our cylinder block okay that's that one there that we were talking about earlier now chances are when i slide this off of this shaft all my little pistons are going to fall out but you can see them all down there spinning around and they are on that swash plate i was telling you about that pivots back and forth when you put the machine in forward or reverse. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this up and we're gonna let those fall out. See that, they all came out. But don't panic. We're gonna show you how to put them back in. And this 
is where I find my problem on these pumps a lot of the times is in these cylinder blocks. And lucky for you, you can actually order these online. You can find them at like Jack's Small Engines. I've seen them on Amazon. And you can see, all right, the way that these operate, they go up and down on these springs. Now, here's the springs here. What happens with these is one or two things. You get dirty oil in here, you get all, uh, some kind of corrosion in there or whatever. These will lock up like this one has. These are all seized up. Okay, and that happens a lot of ways. I mean, when these guys fill machines with hydraulic oil and they're taking the caps off, I've seen like leaves and stuff falling down into the oil, sand falls in there. I mean, it only takes a little bit to get into your fluid and you're all screwed up. This was a working motor, so these should be fine. Now to put them back in, you just basically, now see the wider part of your spring? That's going to go at the bottom there. All right, that's how that works there. And sometimes they're a little tricky to get in. It's going to be a little bit tight at first to go, but then you'll feel it give. All right, and that's back in. Now, another thing that happens with these is, remember, these pistons are going up and down. It's such tight tolerance in here. There's no, uh, there's no rings on these or anything like that. But what happens is over time, these can wear thin or it can wear out the walls inside of here. And when that happens, you start getting oil blowing by. And it's, that's where you start losing pressure because these are so worn out. Oil starts blowing by them. And that's why you're not building the pressure or they're all seized up because there's crud in there. Go ahead and put this last one in there. All right. So now, moving forward, okay. This is a good operating uh, cylinder block here with the pistons. This one here, let's say you get to yours and you have some stuck. What you can do is you flip this over. And you want to take a little tiny screwdriver. All right, so we'll go with something like this. And you want to be careful that you don't score up any of this, okay? So you want to take your screwdriver, and let's find one that is seized up here. We'll go with this one here, all right? So just stick it down in there. And I'm going to tap it out. It's coming out. Okay? So when these are stuck... You definitely want to check the springs. Make sure these aren't busted at all. Okay. Um, you can check your actual pistons. See if there's any scoring or any damage or anything as to why they may have seized up. You can get a light. Shine it down there in the hole. But basically what you want to do is you want to tap all of these out. And then you want to clean this whole block thoroughly. So I'm going to go ahead and tap them out. So we have all of our pistons out. Now we're going to take some, uh, just some brake clean. And now I have a high pressure airline here, and uh, this is probably going to be loud, so I apologize. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blow all these out. We got all them blown out, so now you can take a light and just look down in there and just see if any of them are scored up to where it's not even worth trying to fix this and putting those pistons back in doesn't appear to be any scoring in there so now what you can do is take your pistons and you want to examine them one by one I would clean all of these off there is a reason why they seized up in there could have been some dirty hydro oil I'm not sure but I would take uh, these and clean them one by one be careful you don't lose your springs without these springs it's not gonna work so go ahead and I'm just gonna wipe all these down and then we'll go ahead we'll get back to uh, putting them back in all right, so we got all of our uh, pieces clean here, so we're going to go ahead and reassemble this, and we'll see if we can get these things uh, reactivated again. So I'm just taking some regular WD-40 here, and I'm um, just kind of putting it in the cylinder block. And remember, these were seized up and stuck in there before. So you're going to take your big end of the spring there, and that's going to go in there. And we're going to take our piston and put it down in there and look at that voila she's not getting stuck anymore 
It's going right down in there, nice and smooth. See that? All right, and then just uh, assemble them all again. There we go. All right. All right, so I got them all back in. Um, this was our other one here that was in out of the good motor. These are all good, and these are the ones we just replaced here. You can see they are now all freed up and operating correctly. Next here, now remember this is where that cylinder block was sitting. Let me show you. Take your pick. And just pull up on that. You can slide that bearing right out of there. Uh, keep an eye on that spring too. And here is your race bearing. Just want to check all these. Make sure everything's moving properly, nothing's broken. And you can inspect this washer here, which has this little track in it. And that's basically where the bearings ride on there like that. And now here, this is another common problem here. If you see this spring, basically this spring, you can see it goes up and down. That's where that cylinder block sits on. So that actually helps push that cylinder block up and down as well if this spring is broken that's another reason why your pump may not be working and it's going to have a little washer on top of it that washer actually goes on the bottom like that but make sure that this spring is uh in good shape and it's all in one piece and now you are down to the cradle which we also call the swash plate that when again when you go forward and reverse that goes back and forth and uh, you can pull this cradle up fairly easy. Let me get the uh, pick here. I don't know if I could do this with one hand, actually. If you Before I pull it out, let me just show you. You see how that is riding on that? There's a little keyway right there in that square groove um, right there. That's all that that sits on. And sometimes this swash plate, if this keyway gets... Uh, worn out or destroyed the swash plate might even lock up and when you go to engage it this won't move or if something gets jammed down in here so if this isn't operating to its uh to full extent both directions that's also another reason why you could be having problems but let's see if we can pull this plate up i don't know if i could do it with one hand but we're gonna try here there we go let's see if i can lift it out of there now There's the cradle there, and you can expect that right there. That has a little track in it as well. That is where the other side of your bearings ride in inside of there. And just make sure all this feels good. Um, we're down here, which pretty much there is a seal on the bottom of this unit here, which is held on with a little C-clip. Um, you can take this uh, C-clip on the bottom here off, like, Try to flip this around and show you. All right, there's the bottom of it. And you can see the seal here, this rubber seal. And here is your uh, C-clip right here. I know it's a little dirty, hold on. Um, but you can see, see the little circles right there on each side? That's where you'll put your, uh, your tool in there and you'll kind of spread that out. You wanna spread them apart and and uh, pretty much you're going to pull that clip forward and up. And then you just have this seal where, get a rubber mallet. Definitely do not use a regular steel hammer. Get a rubber mallet, um, and you can tap this shaft, and that seal, you'll see this seal start popping out of there, and your whole shaft will slide out. And uh, that's how you can further inspect just your bottom end here, your seal and bearing and stuff. Or if you have a leak, that's how you can change that seal. You might be able to just get this thing back up and running again. Hopefully all of this makes uh, some type of sense to you. Um, they're not really involved inside. Just take your time. They, it literally comes off in stacks. Everything is one piece after another. Lay them down in the order you took them off. Take a lot of pictures if you have to or take video. Talk to yourself in the video. Explain what you're doing. And um, it would be a really simple process. If anything, you're going to find out that you're going to find out what the part is. You're going to order it. And maybe you get it in a week or two, maybe a day if it's on Amazon. And you're back up and running again.
So if you guys can just take one moment and please hit that subscribe button below and the little bell that's next to it, that'll give you notifications every time I upload a video. But most importantly, please, at a minimum, please hit subscribe. Uh, this is how, you know, I make a living doing videos like this, and it's very important to me to uh, have as many subscribers as possible. And it gives me the, the, uh, the, time, the chance to keep doing these every day for everybody. So I hope this helped you guys out. And again, if you have any further questions and maybe a couple of things that I missed, just uh, sh leave a comment below, or you can shoot me an email at whattodorob at gmail.com. And I try to get back to everybody within a day or so. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, like. I'll see you guys next time.